country. Let's begin from our studios here in Abuja, where we have Jelani Aliu, uh, who is the Director General, National Auto Automotive Design and Development Council, NEDDC. Thank you, sir, for joining us. My pleasure. Yes. And also joining us from our Bini studio, Professor Albert Obano. He's a professor of mechanical engineering, University of Benin. Prof, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you, Mother, for inviting me. All right, and then also uh, with us this morning via Zoom from Zaria, that's in Kaduna State, we'd like to welcome Professor Fatai Anafi, who is head of Department Mechanical Engineering at Amadubele University. Prof, delight to have you with us this morning. Good morning, Nigeria. And also via Zoom, we have the MD and CEO of Autogas Africa, Mr. Oluwashegun Olajuwon. Uh, his company is said to have converted the vehicles that were unveiled by the president uh, for use of uh, LPG and CNG. Uh, Mr. Olajuwon, pleasure to have you with us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, we equally have joined us from our Port Harcourt Network Center, Dixon uh, Iwarimir. It's an indigenous fabricator of gas storage tanks and director of consumer satisfaction and safety initiative. Uh, Mr. Iwarimir, pleasure to have you with us again. We had you, I recall, when we first took on this topic some months ago. Good morning, Nigeria. Happy to have me here. All right, uh, gentlemen, let's begin first with Jelani Aliu, uh, of course, who's a very familiar face around the world. And for us here on Good Morning Nigeria, once again, delight to have you. Nigeria's drive towards the use of what is commonly referred to as auto gas. Is this ambitious or is it the way to go, considering the energy issues around the world today? Uh, yes, thank you. It's good to be here again. Uh, I believe it's something that uh, is not ambitious. Uh, it's, it's not going to be easy, but yes, it's something that has to be done for at least three reasons. Number one, in 2016, Nigeria uh, was one of the 196 countries that uh, uh, signed the Paris Accord. This is an agreement to mitigate the uh, emissions of uh, harmful gases, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and methane, so as to slow down global warming and even maybe reverse it. Uh, so the traditional uh, fuels, petrol and diesel contribute to this uh, harmful gas emissions. So it has to be uh, uh, stopped or, or lessened. Uh, and then Nigeria has huge reserves of gas, uh, the seventh in the world, uh, the largest in Africa, that we're currently underutilizing. So we need to leverage that uh, fuel source to power our economy. And then health-wise, uh, diesel and petrol, they release not only the harmful gases, but also uh, fine particulates that are as a result of those, ga those uh, fuels being burned within the engine. And those are harmful to the lungs and to the overall health of a nation and its people. So at least for these three reasons, Nigeria has to leverage these huge amounts of gas uh, to power our vehicles and power our economy. We, we understand that some cars come with you know, probably closed valve, which, you know, makes it easier for conversion. Others do not, you know. What, from your experience, might be the technical um, imperatives involved in, in this type of initiative? Yes, well, our agency, the National Automotive Design and Development Council, our core objective is to develop the local automotive industry. That is to, uh, to promote the production and assembly of vehicles within Nigeria. So as we support the conversion of vehicles, uh, even those that would be hard to do it and address the technical uh, challenges, we're also promoting the production and assembly of brand new vehicles that would run on gas or gas and diesel or petrol. Um, some, like I mentioned earlier, uh, petrol and diesel burn dirtier than gas. Gas is a cleaner fuel. Uh, it has less particulates. Uh, so it's easier for an engine to handle that. So we will work with stakeholders to ensure that these technical challenges are identified and addressed. You know, I asked the question because I understand that you probably will have to, in, in, in converting to you know, auto gas, mm -hmm. you, you would have to, of course, uh, have a, maybe another tank installed 
mm -hmm. somewhere in the car, yes. either where you have your spare tire or somewhere in the, bo in the boat or whatever. Mm -hmm. Now that is one. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's an issue. You also have to be careful with the piping. Mm -hmm. You also have to be careful with, um, in terms of, you know, the, the mileage that mm -hmm. the, the car will cover. So are mm -hmm. these not issues that are involved in, in this kind of a, uh, initiative? They have to be addressed, and that is why we're working towards uh, training uh, to really bring up that capability across the country. Uh, we currently have uh, training uh, uh, programs going on by the NADDC, and we're all also almost complete with the construction of seven training centers, which we would uh, lean towards uh, auto gas conversion and also bringing up that uh, capability within uh, technicians to know how best and how to be most effective in those co conversion uh, uh, activities. Uh, I believe it's a technology that, yes, the country can handle, uh, but it needs a certain level of expertise. And that is why we'll be working with stakeholders to build that necessary capability within the country. All right, uh, Jalali Aliu, thank you very much. We'll return to you in the course of the conversation. Let's go over now to our Benin Network Center, where we are introduce Professor Albert Obano, who is of mechanical engineering at the University of Benin. Uh, Professor Object, uh, we just said to yourself, look, we're probably talking about the heads of millions of Nigerians uh, who own cars, and uh, are therefore uh, the ones to be persuaded to convert from the PMS to, to uh, auto gas. I, I'm not sure what the population of vehicles is in Nigeria as of today, but the last figure one got some years ago was about 10 million half of which were in the Lagos area. But th th there are complexities with what's going on. The fact that it's happening in advanced countries, uh, more developed countries, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it will play out here. Just, let's just look, let's just take a look at uh, uh, the sociology of, of, uh, of, of, our, of, of our environment. You, you can see there's a great deal of informality. Uh, if you were to go to Akbo, a mechanic village, Akbo, I'm sure you probably sometimes you stroll past there. Uh, you see how they cannibalize engines and they repack the engines. Uh, you go to Ladipo in Lagos, it's the same thing. Uh, and people sometimes are just, their vehicles ordinarily, you say these are not roadworthy, but they have them on the roads. So to whom should we be speaking at the moment? Are these corporate entities or those in more structured public transportation segment. More structured, I would say, for instance, like the buses. If you're rolling out the buses, uh, corporate organizations that have large fleets, take those on. Because if you're talking to every, every other person on the street and you're having all these kind of complications with the potential hazards and costs involved, I would like you to get it right. Mm. Yes, you, I agree with you. Uh, it, it, it could be quite a complicated uh, uh, technology, but at the same time, I believe it can be uh, handled uh, and deployed successfully in Nigeria. Because more than once, Nigeria and Nigerians have shown that they can adopt a new technology and, and, and make it work for them sustainably. Uh, cellu cellular telephony, uh, a lot of people say when uh, automatic transmissions came into the limelight in Nigeria. At first, there was a lot of hesitation. Even the mechanics did not want to handle them. Uh, but through training and experience, it is now a uh, commonplace. I believe the same thing can happen here. Uh, yes, it's new technology to us, but it's been around in the world for a long time, decades. So that's why NADDC is mapping out a strategy uh, that will ensure this program is successful. Uh, under our uh, mandate. So there's a couple of things that we're doing. We're going to go on a nationwide awareness program to reach as many technicians and, as, and mechanics as possible and the general public and make them aware of this technology, this usage of gas and how it can be done safely and successfully. Uh, talking about the advantages and the opportunities. And then we're also going to train uh, many uh, technicians around the country on the conversion and on the maintenance of such engines after the conversion. Like I mentioned earlier, the important thing is to bring up that technical capability and Nigerians, especially our youth, have proven that you give them something, you open it up to them and they'll just fly with it. So we're going to lean on that. 
Uh, we're also going to work uh, with, with uh, stakeholders, uh, not just converting vehicles, but right off the bat. Uh, Mr. Olajuwon mentioned Innocent. Yes, he's doing some great things. So a company like that could right off the bat produce vehicles that are dual fuel or gas powered. Uh, don't go to Sino Trucks uh, and, and other companies too. So, and yes, I agree. It needs to start with a structured uh, party so that uh, everything could be strictly monitored and evaluated and if there are any challenges along the way, uh, they, they, they are resolved. Uh, fleets, uh, you know, municip municipalities with their buses, uh, large corporations, uh, paramilitary forces, the military, uh, I, I think all these would be the perfect uh, uh, pioneers of this technology and then of course also uh, the general public. But it is such uh, a useful technology that would add a lot of value to Nigeria socially and economically. The issue was brought up of we'll have to train people. I believe that is a perfect opportunity to train and empower many of your youth and give them jobs to do. Okay, th this is a technology that, I, you know, I mean, we've talked about it so much that appeals to almost everybody. I, I mean, the, the tricycle rider would want to, you know, feel the keke and a pep, of mm. course, uh, uh, very affordably. Uh, I don't want to say cheap. You know, the ordinary taxi driver would want to have, you know, access to cheap fuel. Yes. So if gas is cheaper and affordable, mm. I mean, it will appeal to everybody. Mm. But from my research, mm. the conversion process in other parts of the, of the world mm. I hear cost between, I mean, conversion maybe to LPG, CN, CNG, and all that, cost between $3,000 to $4,500. Um, we are told that you will need, I mean, some you know, amount of uh, money have been you know, put out there on the social media, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 250000 I, I, I don't know. Who exactly is this thing targeting? Is it the low income earner? Is it the middle income earner? Is it a high brow? Considering the cost mm. Mm. of converting, you know, uh, uh, your car. Yes. Well, uh, you mentioned the cost uh, in other climbs uh, that, that, that is, is very high. But the, the target here in Nigeria is really keep it uh, and make it affordable to uh, a, a, a wide uh, uh, slice of, of, the, uh, of the population. Uh, low income earners, uh, medium income earners. And uh, so we will be working with stakeholders. Uh, this is very new, but we will be working with stakeholders to continue to bring down the cost of that conversion. And that is why we're embarking on research and development. We have an R&D facility under NADDC. So we will leverage those capabilities there to further develop conversion kits that would be more in tune with our economic, uh, 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 with the economy in Nigeria. So, sorry to interject, we know that the, the, the federal government has indicated uh, a kind of, you know, subsidy, I mean, mm -hmm. intervention for, for Nigerians in terms of bridging the cost. But beyond government intervention, ordinarily, mm -hmm. what would it have cost a, a, a low income earner, a car owner to convert his or her car? into auto use, auto gas use? Yes, I wouldn't have that exact figure, uh, but it should be uh, under 200,000 or around about under 300,000. And that is as we speak. Like I mentioned, efforts are on the way to, to continue to bring that cost down. But there's uh, what we call the co cost of purchase of a product and the cost of ownership. That is what will it save you over time, over the period of ownership. When you, add all, when you add all that up, you'll see that it's significantly cheaper to, to, to install that in, uh, conversion kit and use it, uh, seeing that uh, auto gas is cheaper than, than, than either petrol or diesel. So in the long run, even if you have to spend that money to install that kit, uh, it's going to save you quite a bit of money in the, in, in the long run. It's going to be better for you, more efficient, and uh, safer for the environment. Uh, and these are technologies that we have to adopt and use. Uh, because what I keep saying is Nigeria is not an island. And when the world moves in a certain direction, we can't afford as one nation to say, no, we're going the other way. It wouldn't be easy. It, wouldn't be, it would be a little bit difficult, but we can do it. Uh, we have no other option but to uh, do what is best and 
to do what is in the best interest of our people, our nation, and to be in tune with the direction that the, the, the world in, is going. In, in terms of mileage, how far can an auto gas go? Can, 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 can you drive an auto, you know, gas-filled car mm -hmm. for long journeys? And in this part of the country, we know there's still night travels. You know, people still make night travels. People still mm -hmm. travel long distances. Can it go that far? How, how far can it go? It can go as far, or even further than petrol or diesel. So it's, it's more efficient, cheaper. Uh, it's really, it's, it sounds a little bit crazy or space age, but really it isn't. It's a technology that has been around and has proven itself around the world. So I believe a planet in Nigeria is the best thing we could do, especially since a lot of the, the gas that, that we have is, is being wasted and flared. Sometimes we even have to pay to flare it. So it's very logical, uh, socially, economically, to really adopt this as an alternative fuel and uh, put as much effort into it uh, to see how best it can add value to millions of Nigerians uh, across the country. Okay, Ajani, thank you very much. My colleague was asking how far uh, a vehicle can go on auto gas. I was just wondering, you know, the principle we know about the fuel consumption will depend on the number of factors including the state and quality of your tires, mm -hmm. the speed at which you are traveling, mm -hmm. and uh, also the uh, amount of time you spend on the road. I mean, if, if your engine is idling and you are in the traffic uh, gridlock for two hours, mm -hmm. you feel burns, isn't it? I believe it's the same principle that will apply in general with the auto gas, true the, or false? The same principle would, ap would, would apply. Mm -hmm. And then it, it burns cleaner, so per volume we get more energy from it than the other fuels. The other fuels. Are, are, there, yes. are there situations where you, could, where you have, because I know that um, there are vehicles, you know, that do overheating, you know, once they are caught up in traffic. Mm. <laughs> and we know that in this part of in, in Nigeria, I mm. mean, tendency is that you will run into traffic. So mm. is there a chance of overheating and then boosh, something happens? <laughs> <laughs> No, over, no, over no. Hit, sorry, I put on engine. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Claire is carrying. Claire is carrying. When the vehicle overheats, no. I'm sure you see the, the driver goes to the bonnet, opens it, mm. and then uh, if you're, if you're unlucky, uh, maybe the uh, the radiator cover uncocks, and then you can see the steam that emerges from that. If that steam mixes with gas. Mm. Uh -huh. oh. well, the, the, the gas, the whole system. Uh, because even in petrol or diesel vehicles, such steam hardly mixes with, with those fuels. Because with a vehicle, the system is very efficient in keeping every uh, material within where it's needed. So the same thing with gas. Uh, that is why that high technical expertise is required. That is why there's uh, uh, training by professionals. To train professionals is needed. Uh, but uh, no, sh people shouldn't be worried, worried about that. Uh, whatever uh, is deployed uh, would be deployed uh, and making sure that it meets international standards by both us and any stakeholder involved. Okay, thank you very much, Jalani. Let's once again bring in uh, Oluwa Shegun Olajuwon. Uh, Mr. Olajuwon, I asked 